Hey, good morning, church. Pastor Steve here. Welcome Sunday morning, church on the internet. And this is awesome. We're glad you're here with us. Today we're continuing our series, Church Without Walls. And last week we talked about the Holy Devoted Church. Church, we, we want to be wholly devoted here at Albuquerque's First Baptist Church. And what I want to remind you of is that when we're fully devoted to God as believers, then, then we act out in the world. Today what we're going to find in God's Word is that as we act out in the world, part of that is just being radically generous. It's loving our church body in a way that just makes us connect uh, in, in, in ways that we see needs in our neighbor before they even ask for them. We're like, hey, brother, I, I want to I help you. I, I'm there for you. I want to be your friend. I want to help you get through this difficult time in your life. Listen as we expound on God's Word to what God has for us. Uh, Pastor Steve here with Lamar, one of our, our church members. And this Sunday is a, a great time to just remember about what unity does in a church. And, and the, the focus of the passage is going to be really that the unity we have together, it, 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 it reveals itself in this kind of radical generosity where we all work together for, for God's kingdom. Last week I was talking to Brother Lamar, and, and he just had something that God laid on his heart that I wanted him to share with you. All right, thank you, Pastor Steve. Uh, as a church member, I just got to thinking about uh, how our church is doing and, and financially how difficult it is with the situation that we're in. And just came up with the idea God laid on my heart that the stimulus checks that uh, many of us are, are getting there, perhaps there's some of us who uh, are doing okay. And, yeah. and maybe we don't really need it like someone who perhaps has lost a job, they're unemployed, or whatever may be going on in their life. So I was thinking at minimum, we ought to be tithing off of that, and uh, perhaps there'd be a number of you out there who would join Lynn and myself, my wife and myself, in giving a chunk of it or even all of it uh, to the church budget so we can help bolster that as we get through this, this tough time, because ministry is still happening, and people are still serving, and so we need to continue to fund the ministry that God's called us to do here at the church. Amen. And we really want as a church to see that working together, we can still see missionaries go out and church plants happen, even in the midst of like the economy downfall that's a result of this pandemic. And so thank you, brother. Appreciate that. You betcha. Water you turned into wine. Water you turned into wine. You opened the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you There's none like you Cause our God is greater Our God is stronger God you are higher than any other Our God is healer He's awesome in power Our God our God, cause our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, he's awesome in power, our God, our God, if our God is for us, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? Then what could stand against? Sing 
faith is the victory. Faith is the victory. Faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. Encamped along the hills of light, ye Christian soldiers rise and press the battle ere the night shall veil the glowing skies against the foe in veils below let all our strength be hurled faith is the victory we know that overcomes the world faith is the victory faith is the victory His banner over us is love, our sword, the word of God. We tread the road, the saints above, with shouts of triumph trod. By faith they, like a whirlwind's breath, swept over every field. The faith by which they conquer death will be our shining shield. Faith is the victory. Faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. Faith is the victory. Faith is the victory. Faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. Good morning, church. Here we are again. We're going to talk about the Holy Devoted Church. Today, our focus is going to be really on a radically generous church. And as we think about that, try to get our hearts ready, would you join yours with mine as we go to the Lord in prayer and ask Him that He would just uh, speak to us in a great way? Father God, we thank You for Jesus Christ. We thank You for the sacrifice that He made for us on the cross. Lord, as we open Your Word to study, we pray that You would open our hearts to hear God, we pray that you'd make us more like Jesus Christ day by day as we study your word and we submit ourselves to your spirit. We thank you for what you're going to do, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And so today, today, Holy Devoted Church, but uh, we're continuing from last time. And, and what I want you to know, just as we start, just a reminder, right, the church in Acts, it's, it's two things, right? Devoted followers of Christ and it's the local fellowship of believers. And what that means really for us is that when we talk about the church, we're we're not talking about global church. What I, what I really want us to focus on is, is, is here. Albuquerque's First Baptist Church, um, you guys, all of us working together for the glory of God right where God has put us for this specific time, specific place, for, the, for, for right now during like COVID-19. What is God doing through us for His glory? Amen? And so, so that's, that's kind of our, our, our big goal. This is the church. It's what we want to do. And, and as we, we get there, I want you to remember what we're devoted to. So in, in chapter 2 and verse 42, first meeting of the church, and it tells us that the church, they, they devoted themselves. Remember, the 3,000 believers were saved, verse 41. Verse 42, they devoted themselves to four things. The apostles' teaching, the fellowship, breaking of bread, and prayers. And these, these four devotions of the church, they lead themselves to six actions. And today what we're going to do is focus on these first two actions, radical generosity and continued interaction. And when we think about these, what I want you to really notice today is that they, they go together. 
right? So, so don't, don't sit there thinking or stand there. Maybe you can stand for church since you're at home. You could be as wild as you want. Nobody's going to see you. It's okay. But when you're standing there, sitting there thinking, radical generosity, right? It's, it's not separate from togetherness. Because in the context of church, here, here's what happens. The, the radically generous church is completely sold out for one another. And in a very real sense, what that means is that um, church family, we, we care about you. We care about you enough that, that no, matter, no matter where you are, what you're facing, we want to be there for you. And we want to be there for you enough that, that like, you know, you just, just heard about the testimony from, from, from Brother Lamar. We, we want to help support you if you need that help. Because that's where our heart is, because we're a completely unified church. Context today. You got to get the context because it matters. In verse 41, the 3,000 believers are saved, right? So they believe Christ, they're, they're saved, they're baptized. The devoted church then happens. Once the church is devoted to Jesus Christ, you know what they do? They want to tell somebody about it. And here, here's what's exciting to me. As we look at the context, I think it's what happens in our life. Do you remember when you got saved? Do you remember whenever you were like, man, my, my life, God, is sold out for Jesus Christ. There's nothing I want more than a relationship with God. What's the first thing you do? You're like, I, I want to tell a friend. I want to tell somebody else what Jesus Christ did in my life, and that's sharing the gospel. Here's what happens in Acts. They go out and they share the gospel, and then they experience persecution. Uh, the government, it, 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 it shuts them down. The, 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 the high priests, the Sadducees, they come, and if you read in Acts, they, they arrest them, and they, they're like, you guys, you got a got timeout. Like, you got to stop telling people about Jesus. Hey, you know why, why they do that? If you go to a, co a country like a communist country, they want to get rid of religion. They want to stop your, your joy, your hope. You know why? Because uh, we, we, Christian, especially in America where we have freedom of religion and we're free to worship our God, when we have the hope of Jesus Christ in our lives, nothing is going to stop us. Because in my life and in yours, as we follow Jesus and we love him, that hope we have of eternal life makes it so we can have joy no matter what the world throws at us. It doesn't matter what the country says, what the government says. We have hope in this life because Jesus Christ died for us. And that, that gives us hope. And so they experience persecution. They're let out of jail. And what happens, this is like the second meeting of the church. And that's kind of the text for today. So, so the progression, they devote themselves to share the gospel. They get thrown in jail. Lots of persecution. It hurts. And the first thing they do is they go back to their fellowship of believers. And they kind of redevote themselves. They regroup. They, they, uh, they want to be there for one another. And this is important, church family, because, man, in a time of stress or distress or trauma or even drama, what we, do, what we really need is we need to be there for one another. And what happens when they redevote themselves, when they regroup and they come together, is they start to notice, hey, we've got a brother or a sister like over there, and, and they need our help. And we've got another family over here, and that family needs our help. And so then there's, there's groups of people who need help and groups who can help. And they're like, hey, we, we want to come together and we will do anything we can to help you so that you can live your life for the glory of Jesus Christ. Isn't, uh, isn't that a beautiful picture? That's where we ought to be today. So main idea, big, big thing we want to learn. Devotion to the Lord. You can read it with me. Devotion to the Lord results in unity and radical generosity. Devotion to the Lord results in unity and radical generosity. And again, remember, like I want to emphasize this, unity always results in meeting the needs of the people that we unify with. And so when we talk about radical generosity and unity, it's not like, it's not like two separate things. It's that they're absolutely going to come together. Here's the text for today, beginning verse 23. Now you could read with me. When they were released, they went to their friends, right? So, so check it out. They're released from prison. What do they do? They go to their friends, and just before, like, even, apart from everything else, you know what I really love about this? These are the apostles. They're the guys who were with Jesus, and what they say is, those 3,000 guys that we just baptized, they're my friends now. And they're my friends because we have this heart and this soul that is melded together by the Spirit of God, and when I hurt, I want my friends. And they reported what the chief priests and the elders had said to them. And when they had heard it, now this is the group they reported to. They lifted their voices. Do you see what they're doing? They're praying. They lifted their voice, notice, together to God. Verse 31, when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken. 
And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they did what? They continued to speak the word of God with boldness. Important because they just got thrown in jail for speaking the word with boldness. But when they go to their friends, they're emboldened to go back out and, 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 and share Christ again. Uh, continues, verse 32. Now, again, the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul. And no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own. But they had everything in common. So imagine a church where you come to church and nobody's like, hey, that's my pew. <laughs> They're like, you, want, you, you can sit here. Nothing is mine. It's ours. It's, it's the community of believers. Everything they had in common. It was, it, there, was, there was no place like church in this passage. Just like in our society, no, no place. When we look at this building, no, no person in our fellowship should sit here and say, this is, this is my church, not your church. Listen, when you're a believer in Jesus Christ and you come to church here at Albuquerque's First Baptist Church, you are absolutely 100% welcome with open arms and nobody is going to tell you that this is not a place for you. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, we have everything in common. And with great power, do you see the apostles, they're, they're going back to Jesus. With great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And great grace was upon them all. Then verse 34, check it out. There was not a needy person among them because as many as were owners of lands and houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold and they laid it at the apostles' feet and it was distributed to each as any had need. Thus, do you see the radical generosity arising? Thus Joseph, who is called by the apostles Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, a Levite, a native of Cyprus, sold a field that belonged to him and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. So again, right, check it out. Big idea. Devotion to the Lord results in unity and radical generosity. Christian, um, church, understand that, that maybe more than anything else, when we really love each other, when we really want to unify, when we say, you are my brother in Christ or my sister in Christ and we're family, what it, what it really means is that I am willing to lay down my life for you. Right, like, so here, here, here we go. Um, you could say it this way. I am devoted to the Lord. I am devoted to the Lord. And so that, that's true. What does that mean we should do? So, so I am committed to unity and radical generosity. I am committed to unity and radical generosity. Here's, here's the way it plays out in the text we read. There's a, a four-part recipe, I'm going to say. Four-part recipe for togetherness. Right, unity, this, 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 this interaction we have, and radical generosity, it, it works. Do you notice there's a word that's over and over? Together. Do you see they're struggling together? They're praying together. They're evangelizing together. They're unifying together. And what I want you to notice as we go through this, I want you to notice that we could read this almost like an oath or like a promise. And we could sit here, and I, I could tell you guys, and I think you could say with me, church here, here at AFBC, um, I, I will struggle together with you. I will, I will pray together with you. I will evangelize together with you. I will unify together with you. This kind of unity we have, it all begins with a struggle. And remember the text, they went to their friends and reported and what a beautiful text because what it shows us is that these apostles, and the reason I think it's important is because when we think about apostle, we think of guys like Paul or Peter. And here's, here's guys like Peter healed people. He saw the lame get up and walk and, 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 and they saw these just amazing things happen out there in the world. But what do they do? When they need help, they go to the church body. In other words, uh, friend, just very seriously, it doesn't matter how strong you think your faith might be. It doesn't matter like how long you've been a Christian. Today, if you struggle, what you need is you need to go to your friends. And I know that as we experience the isolation and, and, and just being uh, in a place where we can't go out and go about our daily lives, where everything's just different, uh, there's a time when may, maybe you're struggling today. And if you're struggling today, what I want to invite you to do is, is, is call somebody Look, you, you can call me. My, my phone number's all over the place. You can email me, text me. You can comment on the video that you want to talk. Uh, we'll, we'll get a hold of you. Uh, they went to their friends and they reported what happened. So what we need to do, what we learn from this, if we want to be a radically generous, unified church, we have to tell people, would you help me? 
Like, man, I'm having a rough day. I need the fellowship of believers because today, man, frankly, it stinks. I need something. I need some help. And, and hear me, there's no judgment. If you come to me and you say, Pastor, I'm struggling, no judgment. If you come to a brother or sister, no judgment. What I want you to notice in the text as they tell their friends... You know what, what we don't see in the text? Nobody goes and says, you know, Peter, this is what you should have said to the high priest. You know, Peter, if you only would have done this, they would have let you out of jail quicker. You should have evangelized, and there's no criticism. There's just like, hey, guys, we're here for you, and we're going to support you because we see that you're struggling. Friend, if you're struggling today, man, we're, we're here for you. We want to be there for you. Second, get the second part of the recipe. Not only do they struggle together, but they pray together. And I think what's so cool is that they lifted their voices together to God. And again, just, just think, right? Apostles. These guys, they knew Jesus Christ. They, they walked. They fellowshiped. They were at the Last Supper. They saw the crucifixion. They, they knew Christ better than probably anybody. They don't pray alone. Right? They, they pray together. There's this, there's this idea sometimes people come to me and they're like, Pastor, would, would you pray for me? It, it's almost like, and I, listen, I don't mean this in a bad way. It's, it's like they think that because, because I'm Pastor Steve that my prayer means more. Here, here's what I want you to get today, Christian. Your, your prayer matters as much as mine, right? Like just, just because Pastor Steve went to seminary, like there's, there's nothing special. There's, there's, nothing, there's nothing special about me and, and God compared to what you have with God. When we read places like Romans 8, everybody who believes is adopted into the family of God. You know, all of my kids are different, but I listen and love each of them when they talk to me. And when God listens to what you say to God, God listens and loves, and he wants what you have to say with him. You know what we need is to lift our voices together to God. Because if we're all alone in our prayer, uh, we're really, we're not praying uh, biblically in, in, this in, in this instance. And so um, here, here's what I want you to get. A powerful prayer includes, and just like just to caveat this, right? When we're talking about prayer here, it's this prayer in this context. So there's, there's lots of examples of prayer. But here in the context of struggling, in the context of we want to go out and evangelize for Jesus Christ, that we want to be together, first, first thing we got to unify with other believers in prayer. In other words, uh, if you need help, you, we got to pray together, right? We, we got we to pray together. Second, we got to pray according to God's word. If you look in the text, what, what you start to see in verses 25 and 26, they're, they're quoting scripture. They, 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 they say in the prayer, we're, we're praying, verse 24, Sovereign Lord who made the heaven and the earth, the sea, everything in them, who through the mouth of our father David, and then they start quoting what God's word says. We, we pray according to God's word. You know, there's, there's power in saying, God, I know that you're a sovereign father. I know that you provide all things. God, I know that even though maybe I lost my job or I, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. God, I don't know how to be a parent. God, I know you know all things. There's power in knowing what God's word says. Third, by the way, the reason... Uh, the reason we do Bible studies and small groups and the reason, the reason we do this is we want you to know God's word so that you can pray God's word. Uh, third, we pray for the power of God. And I think what's, what's astounding, if you follow, man, if you just, if you follow this through from the beginning in, in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, what we start to see is that uh, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit's come upon you. You'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. And then, and then they go out with power and they witness, they get thrown in jail in chapter 4 and verse 13. You know, when they're, when, when they're, when they're before the authorities, the Bible tells us when they, that's the, the high priest, the elders, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived they were uneducated common men, they were astonished and they recognized that they had been with Jesus. You know what, what we see? They had the power of God in their lives. And what we see they pray for in verses 29 and 30, they prayed for the power of God. They say, Lord, Look upon their threats and grant to your servants, like, give us, God, to continue to speak your word with all boldness. And I, man, power, boldness. Sometimes, sometimes I dare to say, Christian, that we don't think as highly of God as we ought. 
right? Like we serve the God who's sovereign and creator of all things. And we pray to God small prayers. Let me challenge you today as you pray, pray in unity and you pray according to God's word that you would pray for the power of God in big ways. Pray for God to do things that you think are absolutely outside of what you could do alone. Maybe, like, maybe you're, here, you're, you're, you're at home and you're like, man, pastor, I don't know how I could ever tell somebody about Jesus. Pray that God would give you that kind of boldness. Maybe you're home with your kids and you're like, man, pastor, I don't know how I'm going to get through the end of, of May or the middle of May or whenever they let us out of our houses. You're like, man, God, I just don't know. Pray that God would give you that kind of power because that is what truly happens when we love God and we trust him. God gives big things to God's people. By the way, when we talk about praying in unity together, um, I've asked Pastor Robert to set up a, uh, a Zoom prayer meeting. Because we want to try praying together. We're going to try to use technology. So you should be getting an email this week. And you'll have instructions on how to join us in a prayer meeting. And we're going to try to virtually pray together, right? So if you have a phone, you can call in. Or if you have a computer, you can video in. And we'll, we'll pray in unity together this week. So we can maybe try to start that better. Third, right, get this. So first, we struggle together. We, we, we let ourselves be vulnerable in front of our brothers and sisters so that we can pray together. Third, evangelize together. Look, look at what happens. They're filled with the Holy Spirit and they continue to speak the word of God with boldness. And the reason this is extraordinary, these are guys that just got put in jail for telling people about Jesus Christ. And what happens after they pray? They get the boldness that they wanted. I, there's a couple things I want you to really get about this. What happens is God answers prayer. Amen? God answers your prayer. God is going to absolutely do whatever it is that, 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 that he wants to do in your life so that he could be maximally glorified. If you would ask God to do big things, God's going to surprise you by doing amazing things in your life. Second thing I want you to get when we talk about evangelizing together, the whole purpose of this, the reason the church exists is so that we could tell people about Jesus Christ. You know, the radical generosity, the unity, the us coming together, the whole reason that we have facilities, the reason we do this is we want the world to know Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. We want them to know what's happened in our heart because we've trusted Jesus Christ as our absolute Lord and Savior. We've recognized we're sinners. We know that he's paid the debt. We know Jesus and we want the world to know Jesus Christ. Amen. Four. Four, get this. Not only do we struggle together, pray together, evangelize together, but we unify together. And what I really love about the text is if you go through this, it's so redundantly redundant. Like they came together, they gathered together, they're together, they're all together, they're of one heart and one soul. Nobody's alone. Every, they're like, there's so much, the full number were of one heart and one soul. What, what God is wanting us to get is that they're they're completely, 100%, like, unified all together. In other words, we, we've talked about this. If you were with us last week, there's, there's no such thing as a Lone Ranger Christian. There's just not. There's not, like, the one dude out there that's all by himself, and he's like, oh, yeah, I'm doing church all by myself forever. Taint never been, taint, <laughs> taint never been a thing in God's Word. God wants us to unify together with other people. And, and, and what's beautiful is when we're unified together, right, when we're unified to get together, there's, there's three things that happen. It at least includes that we're of one heart and one soul. And what I love about this passage and what I love about that it results in generosity is that it means that we're really involved in one another's lives. It means that they are so unified. When, 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 when Luke talks about it in Acts, he says, hey, in this church, they, they knew each other. You know, they, they were like, hey, where, where's Pastor Steve on Friday night? Oh, I know. He's, he's home with his kids making pizza because that's what Pastor Steve does on Friday nights with his kids. They're like, hey, where, 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 where's, where's Jay? What, what's he doing? What, what do you think Pastor Robert's doing? What are their hobbies? What are they doing in life? What are their struggles? What's, what's going on real? Where, what's their relationship like? What is making them who they are? They said that about all the brothers and sisters and said, man, they were, they're of one heart and one soul. There's, there's no division. I, I remember when uh, I came and came here and preached in view of a call, uh, the, the vote was absolutely unanimous. And I, I was actually surprised by that. But what it shows is it shows this unity of believers of like one heart and one soul. It shows that Christians are there saying, we, we want to be on board absolutely together. 
When I think about something like COVID-19, the virus, the enemy we can't see, however we want to cast that, uh, you know what we need right now? We need unity. We need unity within the church body because we want the world to see that we have that kind of unity. Second thing, unity happens according to the apostles' teaching. And I think this is important because like unity for unity's sake, it's, it's not that important. Unity for the sake of the gospel and the glory of Jesus Christ. Now, now that's something worth fighting for. Unity according to the apostles. Unity that's focused on God's word. Right? There, there's, there's some things that are absolutely essential in life and they're right here in God's word. And the things that are not essential, like there's liberty in that. There's liberty in non-essential things, but there's absolute unity in things that absolutely matter. It's according to God's word, according to the apostles' teaching. When we tell you that we're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, and Christ alone, we have absolute unity in that. If I ask you to do like hymns or praise music, you know what? You could be, def- you, you, we, we, we can divide. We can say, you know what? I, I like this or that better. But when it comes to God's word, we're absolutely unified. Third, it results in radical generosity. And I want you to notice there was not a needy person among them. In fact, I want you to notice verses 32, 34 through 37, it is all about the generosity that people had. It says, nobody said anything that they had belonged to him, uh, his own, but they had everything in common. And so just, just quickly, let me address this. This is not socialism. It's not communism. The, the difference, this is absolutely free will. This is the body of believers saying, I see a need in my brothers and sisters that are of one heart and one soul with me. And I know that what you need, you really need it. And I know that I have extra. Like, I know that maybe I'm the guy or the girl that got this stimulus, and I don't need it. And so I can use that to further God's kingdom and do amazing stuff in, in, in God's, God's glory will be exalted through, through, through what I have extra. And, and so what happens? They, they see, they're looking, they're, they're persecuted, they're, they're struggling, they're, they're, they know everything about one another, and great power comes upon them. And there's not a single needy person among them in verse 34. For as many as were owners of lands or houses, they sold them, they brought the proceeds, they laid it at the apostles' feet, it was distributed to each as any had need. Joseph, it says, who is called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, a Levite, a native of Cyprus. He sold a field. He brought all the money and he laid it at the apostles' feet. Here's what I think is so beautiful about this, this kind of radical generosity. It happens organically. I, I could sit here. I could stand here. I can tell you, church, give to the Lord generously. But what I really want for you to do is to look around at your brothers and sisters, look at the kingdom of God and say, you know what, man, God has blessed me and I see a need that my brother has and I want to bless that guy. I want to bless that girl. I want to do something that's amazing for God's kingdom because that's what God's put on my heart. What I want for you is for God to put on your heart this burden of radical generosity, not that you would sit here and feel bad and say, well, you know, I'm only giving because Pastor Steve guilted me into it. Look, there's no guilt. It's all about what rises out of your heart. Um, Radical generosity is the result of the unity that happens. It's the result of what God is doing in your life. I think Philippians chapter 2 captures this so great. It says, do nothing. Chapter 2, verse 3. Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count to others more significant than yourselves. This is church. We look around. We say, man, I, I want that guy to have it better than I have. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. You see what Paul is saying to the Philippians is exactly what Luke is recording in Acts, that the result of unity is radical generosity and there's not a needy person among them. I pray at Albuquerque's First Baptist Church, listen, if you're having a hard time right now because of COVID-19, let us know. We want to help. And if you can help right now because you are blessed during this time, let us connect you with somebody maybe who needs help or use that money that you could further a missionary, help plant a church, do something. And all of this, remember, We do because Jesus Christ was first generous to us. May the generosity of Jesus propel us toward radical generosity. I I just read Philippians 2, a couple verses where it says, esteem others better than you. Listen to, to the way it continues, the way it plays out. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. Do do you see what, what Jesus is doing? He's royalty in heaven. He's, he's already the king of kings. And he owns all the cattle on a thousand hills. 
And this Christ, he says, it says he did not count equality with God a thing to be held on to. But he made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of man, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Here's what I want you to see, church. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, hung himself on a cross. He gave everything up and offered that generously to us, that, that salvation so generously and freely, freely to us. It says, therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every, every name, so that at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess, Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Friend, today, today you can be covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, who so graciously stepped down from his throne on heaven and hung himself on that cross and bled and died for your salvation. All you have to do, friend, today is just call out to God and say, God, I know I'm a sinner. I know I've failed to keep your law, to keep your requirements. Today I'm trusting that Jesus shed his blood for me and today God forgive me and save me. If you'd do that, God would save you today. Better is one day in your courts Better is one day in your house Better is one day in your courts And thousands elsewhere Better is one day in your courts Better is one day in your house Better is one day in your courts And thousands elsewhere Better is one day Better is one day in your courts Better is one day in your house Better is one day in your courts And thousands elsewhere Better is one day in your courts Better is one day in your house Better is one day in your courts And thousands elsewhere And thousands elsewhere My heart and flesh cry out to you, the living God. Your spirit's water to my soul. I've tasted and I've seen. Come once again to me. I will draw near to you. I will draw near. Thousands elsewhere.